In our last video, which was the uh, part two of our introduction to phasers, we noted that a uh, simple two-dimensional vector, that is a vector in the xy plane, it can be expressed in terms of uh, its x component and its y component, or the other way of expressing the vector is in terms of its magnitude and the angle that it makes with the x-axis. This is the, the polar representation. And we're going to talk about that more in this video. Um, one change that we made to our axis is the vertical axis, the, the y-axis, is multiplied by j, where j is the square root of negative 1. And this crops up continuously um, when we talk about impedance and reactance and so forth. And basically the reason why, and we'll discuss it in more detail in, in uh, more future videos, but the reason why is because of the Euler relationship, where e to the j theta equals the cosine of theta plus j times the sine of theta. Uh, again, j, that's the square root of negative 1. Um, for the exponent, theta has to be expressed in radians. Now here for cosines and sines, it could be expressed either in terms of radians or degrees. But here it must be expressed in radians. And of course this is a complex number. It has a real component and an imaginary component. So imagine, for example, if we have an alternating current that in fact is a cosine wave. So you could say, well, that alternating current then, that would just be the real part of e to the j theta. Or if the alternating current was obeyed a sine function, then we could say that alternating current was just the imaginary part of e to the j theta. But this relationship is used a lot uh, in our analysis on um, alternating currents. So this is where the square root of negative 1 keeps cropping up, mainly because of this relationship right here. And we'll talk about that in a bit more detail um, in our future videos. We want to pick up on for this video is the fact that we can have rectangular representation of a vector. You say that vector v equals vx plus vy, and of course the magnitude of that vector, that's just the square root of vx squared plus vy squared. And then here, with our polar representation, it depends upon the magnitude of the vector, just call that r, and the angle theta that it makes with the x-axis. Both of these um, have their advantages. For adding vectors, it's advantageous to have them in this form, as we'll demonstrate in just a moment. To multiply vectors, as we'll demonstrate in a future video, it's advantageous to have them expressed in their polar form. Now let's just take a brief look at what happens when we're adding vectors, just to remind ourselves. Here we have two vectors, vector b and vector a. And let's say we want to take vector a and add it onto vector b. And then what we can do is just slide it over so that the beginning part of vector A is right here at the tip of vector B. And that's what we've done over here. So here's B, now here comes vector A, and then when we add them together, that would be this vector. It's at the beginning of B, and then it ends at the end of A. So vector B plus vector A gives us this vector. Well, B, of course, has an x component, and so does A. The component of our added vector, that's just the B component plus 
the A component. And of course for the Y components it works out the same. So if we have vectors expressed like this, then it's very easy to add them. So let's just take an example here. Suppose we have two polar vectors that we want to add together. Say we have a polar vector, it's 10, has a magnitude of 10 units, and it makes an angle of 36.9 degrees with the x-axis. And we want to add that to another polar vector, it has magnitude 6, and that makes an angle of 120 degrees with respect to the x-axis. And we want to add these two vectors together. So these are in polar form. We want to convert them into rectangular form. Then all we have to do is add the x components and the y components together, and we'll have our sum. And of course, the way we're going to do that is here is a vector and polar representation, magnitude r, and it makes an angle theta with respect to the x axis. So, of course, the x component of this vector, that would be its magnitude r times the cosine of theta. That will give us the x component. Then the magnitude r times the sine of theta gives the vertical or the y component. Call that b. So then our vector can be expressed as a plus jb. a being r times the cosine of theta. b is r times the sine of theta. And that's exactly what we're going to do with these two polar vectors. So 10 angle 36.9 degrees to get that into rectangular form that will be 10 cosine of 36.9 degrees plus j sine of 36 point nine degrees. And we'll have it in rectangular form. And I think the cosine of thirty six point nine degrees is like point eight. So now if we multiply it by ten, this is eight plus J and I think the sine of this is like six tenths and we we have a mistake here. We don't want this J times that we want it J ten times that. We of course always have to have it so that it's the magnitude of the vector times the cosine and the sine. So this is J10 times the sine of 36.9 degrees. And I think that's like 8 tenths. If you look down a calculator or look it up in tables, no, closer to 6 tenths. So this would be plus 6j. So this polar vector in rectangular coordinates comes to be expressed like this. Now we'll do the same thing for this one. 6, 120 degrees equals 6 times the cosine of 120 degrees plus j6 times the sine of 120 degrees. Now, a, a crude representation of our first polar vector might look something like this then. Magnitude 10 and an angle of 36.9 degrees. For our second one, it has a magnitude of 6, but the angle is 120 degrees. 
that it makes with the x-axis. So that might look something like this. Magnitude 6, but the angle here is 120 degrees. So the x component of this vector is going to be over here. So it's going to be negative. So 6 times the cosine of 120 degrees, that can be the same thing as 6 times the cosine of the smaller reference angle. And that's going to be 60 degrees, but it's going to have a negative number by it because this is this cos this x component is over to the left of the origin. So this will equal minus 6 times the cosine of 60 degrees. And the cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half, so the x component is minus 3 for this polar vector that we have demonstrated very crudely right here. And we can label our axis if we want to. What about this part, 6 times the sine of 120 degrees? Well, here we go over here, so x is negative, but then we're going up, so the y component is positive, so that will equal plus 6 times the sine of the reference angle the smaller one here, the 60 degree one. And that's the square root of 3 over 2, or that's like 0.866. Then multiply that by 6, and I think it comes out to be a little bit more than 5. So this vector, this polar vector, 6 120 comes out to equal minus 3 plus j 5.2. And our first polar vector, 10, 36.9, that came out to equal 8 plus j 6 from the first one. Now, something that we might elaborate on here for a moment. If we're in the first quadrant, that is where the angle is between 0 and 90 degrees, here the cosine is positive and the sine is positive. If we're over here in the second quadrant, here the cosine is negative, the sine is still positive. And if we're in the third quadrant, here the cosine is negative and the sine is negative. In the fourth quadrant, the cosine is positive, but the sine is negative. And the tangent of theta, of course, that's the sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta. So if we're in quadrant 2 or quadrant 4, then the tangent is going to come out to be negative, because one of these is negative. If we're in quadrant 1, of course, the tangent is positive. And if we're in quadrant 3, the tangent of this angle down here in quadrant 3 would also be positive because we're dividing a negative by a negative. And again, we'll see more examples of this in our future problems. But here, for this problem, we wanted to add these two polar vectors together. So. Now we're all set to add them together. Add the real components together. Minus 3 plus 8, that's 5. Then we have plus, looks like this is going to be 11.2. So this polar vector plus this polar vector gives this vector. Now if we want to go back and express this in polar form, Let's see if we can just crudely draw it. It 
go over 5 units and it goes up 11 units. So it'd be something like this. Where this is 11.2 and that's 5. Of course this is the x-axis. This is JY. Now if we want to express this in terms of polar coordinates, well first step is what's the magnitude of that? And that is going to be the square root of 25, 5 squared, plus 11.2 squared. And I think uh, what we got was a little bit more than 12. It was like 12.27. So for this vector, we get magnitude of 12.27. And now for the angle that it makes, this angle theta, Well, theta, that will be the inverse tangent of 11.2 divided by 5. And 11.2 divided by 5 is a little bit more than 2. I think it's like 2.24. And again, you can do this on a calculator or we just looked it up in tables, and that is an angle approximately of 65 and 6 tenths degrees. So this vector expressed in rectangular form equals this vector in polar form. So this polar vector plus this polar vector gives this sum, which we can also express as a polar vector. Finally, we get it back in this form. So that's the end of the problem. We just wanted to give a brief demonstration then of having a vector, actually two vectors, expressed in polar form, uh, then expressing them in terms of their x and y components, adding them together, and then taking that vector and going back and expressing it in terms of uh, as a polar vector. And we'll have more examples of this uh, problems that we have worked in the other videos as well. I think that's probably enough for this video. I think this is video number 70 now in our series. Uh, electrical circuits. Anyway, the playlist for all the videos is at the website digital-university.org.